All right, so this is the video explanation of the Sudoku project. First, let me show you how it looks like when it's finished. So if I load the page, um, I get, if I load the page and the server's not responding, I just get, you know, an HTML table with a bunch of input fields that are sized to fit the table cell. And let me see what happened with the, okay. So my request failed. You gotta see why. Let me see. Here I am on my server. I'm looking for the folder that it is because this server is brand new, so I'm not really used to how um, anything works, how anything is located. Let me see. There we go. So I'm starting the server right now. There we go. And if I refresh the page, it's going to come back with a response and it's going to load the Sudoku from the page. And basically what's happening is on page load, I'm sending a request to the server and I'm getting back the two-dimensional array containing the Sudoku, the, the started Sudoku board. You know, only it only has certain cells filled out. And what the user is supposed to fill in uh, stays empty. And then I go one by one those cells and see, hey, did the response that I get from the server have anything in cell 00? No, then I skip that. Did it have anything in cell 01? No, then I skip that. Did it have anything in cell 02? No, then I skip that and so on. When I get to this one, uh, did it have anything in cell 04? Yes. So I'm going to replace that input, the, the text input that was there. I'm just going to get rid of it and put whatever came back from the server as the content of that cell. So let's see what that looks like in code. <clears throat> well, first of all, here's our markup, right? I have just have a big table with a bunch of TDs. Each TD has an input inside of it with a max length of one. It's all styled. Um, that's not it. Here. So it's all styled. Uh, I generated this button with an online CSS button generator, and that formatting is for this button. And here, my input type text, you know, has width 50 pixels, height 50 pixels, font size, blah, 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 border. I change the font family to impact for everything, every element on the page. And here's my table that has margins and border. The margin zero auto is, on, is in order to center the table. So I got, you know, one row with nine columns inside of it, another row with nine columns inside of it. Each one has a specific ID. R0, C0 is row zero, column zero. R0, C8 is row 0, column 8. R6, C0 is row 6, column 0, and so on. And here's my actual, well, then I have my validate button, right, as a div. And then I have my script loading jQuery, because I use jQuery for everything. Then I have my script loading Sudoku, the Sudoku validator from the GitHub repo that's under my personal account, because I'm going to need that to validate the Sudoku puzzle once the user is done. And here we go. As soon as the page, you know, all of this finishes, this script kicks in, is the last thing in the page. And what does it do? First thing it does, just sends an Ajax request to that URL, um, which is, you know, my the, the FBI stuff is no longer located in swobrain.com, it's located in this new server, uh, where the IP address is 104, 131, 17, 187, port 4004. So it sends a request there, and upon success, it's going to run this function. What does the function do? Well, the function receives the response the text status and the XML HTTP response object as parameters. We don't really concern ourselves with either of these two. It's all about the response. I console log the response just to make sure that it comes out. And that's why you saw when I loaded the page, why you saw that array, array, array nine came and a nine cell array came, you see? And if we look at this nine cell array, then I'm console logging. So as soon as the page loads, this is gonna clear, right? It's going to send a request. It's going to come back and look. The response gets console.log because of the statement right here. As soon as the response comes back, I log in and look what it has. It has 
is an array of nine elements where each element is an array of nine cells itself. So let's look at our row zero is empty, six, empty, 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 empty. And look, empty, six, empty, 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 empty. That's what I actually have going on in my board. Row one is empty, five, empty, three. Look, empty, five, empty, three. And we have empty, empty, two, empty, empty. And that's exactly what we have here, empty, empty, two, empty, empty and so on and so forth. That, that response that I got from the server is the array that I'm going to load into the Sudoku board. So now, how do I iterate a two-dimensional array? We've gone over this in class a couple of times. You know, you iterate over the rows first, and then for each row, inside the loop that iterates over the rows, you iterate through each column, right? And what do we do? Well, bar cell ID, we construct a string that's going to be equivalent to the cell ID of the current cell that we're looking at. So we start with hashtag R, plus the, act, the value of the variable r that we're looking at, and then uh, plus the string c, plus the value of the variable c that we're looking at, right? So when the, this first, the, the first time that this code inside here runs, cell id is going to be r0, z0, right? And then this runs, and then we move back to the top of the inner loop, and c is now 1. So then this is going to be r0, c1. And then, you know, this code runs, and then we get back to the top of the loop, and, and C is now 2. So this is going to be R0, C2, and so on and so forth until, you know, R hits 8, at which point, you know, we have R0, C8, and then it runs. And since 8 is no, like, then thus 8 plus plus, it becomes 9. And when C is 9, it's no longer less than 9, it's going to stop running this loop, going to run its course, and we're going to get back to the top of this one. And now it's going to be R1. So R is going to, do R plus plus and R is going to become one. So now we're going to be looking at R1, C0, R1, um, C1, R1, C2, R1, C3, and so on and so forth. It's going to iterate through the entire grid. And what do we do? So we're constructing a cell ID. Let's say that we're you know currently on row six, column three. So this is going to be hashtag R6, C3. And then what am I saying? Hey, I'm looking into that array that I got as a response, right? If in the response array, column six, I mean, row six, column three is different from empty. Notice in the response array that we got, everything that's supposed to be empty came back as empty strings, right? Whenever it's not empty, that's when I want to put that number on the board. So if whatever's in the response in that row and column is empty, then, hey, jQuery, go get me that cell. You know, with the ID that I constructed here, and then change the HTML of it to whatever is in the response array. So check it out. Let's say that, let's go, R6. Let's say that we are in, in row 6, column 0, right? So cell ID is going to be hashtag R6C0. And then I'm saying, hey, if resp 60 is different from empty, which it is, right? Because resp 6 so resp 6, 0 is this one right here, which is a 1. If it's different from empty, then jQuery go into hashtag R6C0. So go into here, R6C0, get this element, and replace this HTML content with the number 1. That's basically what that code does, you know. But it'll do it differently every time, depending on, the, on this array that you get from the server. Um, and then that's it. That's it for the Ajax request. And now, what's the next? Um, <clears throat> the next step is having a button handler, right? So that it's having a click listener for this button, so that when I click this button, something happens. What's going to happen? Well, first I attach the click listener. Here it is, validate button, click function, and look, this is what happens. First, var user board equals load user board. This is a, a, a function that I defined. Um, and it's right here. Basically, it loads, it goes one by one, figuring out what the user typed in everything here. You know? And then loads that, creates a Sudoku object out of it, like here, and it alerts whether it was valid or not. That's pretty much it. You can change that alert to display something in an HTML element or whatever you like. But let me show you how it works. I click on here. There we go. Validation false, obviously, because that's obviously not a correct solution to the puzzle. 
But uh, yeah, that's it for that one. Just make sure you digest it, understand it. What's going to come out in the final is going to be much simpler. But you need to know the basics of how to send a request and do something with the response.